before me I can only imagine I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all you be still Will I stand in your presence? Do my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all?
our mothers leading the way. Sometimes we know where we're going, but often we're not so sure. Faith, it's a journey. Grandma's Marathon is coming up, and I've always embraced the thought of not thinking about the destination, but enjoying the North Shore. And faith is the same way. Faith's a journey, not a destination. And we're all going somewhere in life, from here to what's next, to there, moving from one place to another, one stage, season, career, or phase to another. And sometimes this raises our anxiety, and other times it's exciting. In lifelong faith, here in the heights with you all, it's exciting to think about where we're going together. Sometimes we know where we're going, but often we're not so sure. And I'm grateful for that. I'm glad that the next chapter isn't already written. We get to figure it out together. Midweek, we gather with kids, we play activities, and one of the activities lately, they put the masks on like this, <laughs> not like this like this, and uh, they get the fun noodles together, and then they go after one another, and whoever gets hit is down. From here to there, some get really low, some go high, some move quick. It's a fun little activity that we're leading. From here to there is our junior high. Some think faith is a destination, but it's a lifelong journey, and it's a joy. And it's all based in the foundation of grace. God's grace in the risen Christ. And it has power to thrust us from where we are to what's next. Our first week in our focus was from just getting by to dreaming big. You remember the transformer in the back that Pastor Hans brought with him from Alexandria. The big dream that God has in store for us. From hurting to hope, my mentor, Pastor Greg Garmer, who served the North Shore for many years in French River. I was looking for leadership while I was away in Atlanta, and he said, Holy Cross, sure, I'll go for you, Noah. And now, this morning, we focus on these words of from numbing out. What does that mean to you? Numbing out to leaning in from here to there, from lashing out next week to loving more. God's unconditional love that we see in mothers. These weeks, as spring comes upon us, wasn't yesterday beautiful? Oh, all the yard work we got done yesterday. And the robins, they did too. But they took an interesting turn. They have begun to bombard my home. And this father, he protects his house. <laughs> they're going after the windows. They see their reflection and they're here. I don't know what to do. So if you have any feedback or advice on how to deal with robins, let me know. We're going somewhere, and we're going somewhere together, and God's always along for the ride, moving us from where we are to the life God yearns for us, and their lives full of freedom, freedom from guilt, shame, freedom from disappointment, judgment, hope, and a whole lot of joy. Let us rise as our pipe organ, the North Star, leads us into worship, blessing, and honor.
You may be seated. I was thinking that I was a hard, having a hard time finding the melody of the hymn, and it's because our cantor, that motherly figure in our midst, is on her way, I believe, Jessica, did you say Denver? Montana, yeah. And I hope she's watching and with us from Montana and know that she's a big part of who we are, <laughs> Mrs. Nancy Elmore. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, I heard some of you want to respond to me, and I love that because I need it as well. Good morning, Holy Cross. Thank you, thank you. He gets us. Yeah, it's Mother's Day. And we know God's care and presence because of the risen Christ. And he gets you. He gets all that you are and all that you're experiencing. If you're sitting at home or here in the Heights, you're welcome into this powerful presence of Christ. He gets us all. And we gather for a moment now at the baptismal font, which will be busy next weekend with a few baptisms as we soak our babes in our midst with God's love. Jesus understands all that you're going through. He too was arrested, wronged, a refugee. Think about that for a moment. All those on the run. And he was canceled as well. I know that's a hot topic right now. But Jesus was as well by the powers that be. He was bound. Sometimes we feel that from time to time. He faced authorities. He was convicted he was accused too. And from it all, God raised him for you and me. And because of it, we're free. What a joyful life it is. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of motherly love. Sometimes we think of faith as a destination we arrive at or a goal we achieve. Remind us that it's a beautiful journey of faith, a lifelong one in which you are always moving us through all the good and all the bad, you are always moving us towards peace, hope, and your love. Amen. There's power when we pray together. No matter what you're facing, God, and we do as well, we care about it. So let us take a moment and let me know online, at home, or here, how we can pray for you. We pray for Larry and Cindy and the family of Pete Cummings. Do you remember Pete and Barb? Yeah. Not too long ago, they would be very busy this time of year. Yeah. Greetings to Helga. We continue to hold your whole prayer, your whole family in our prayer, Helga. Lavon Kangas. Eleanor Larson. We were able to be with her this last week as she was hospitalized. She said, greet my church for me. For Jean who is in Carlton, and we're caring for her, for Jana. <laughs> Dear Jana, and leading worship with us, 
You bet we're praying for you every step of the way. For Jason, Jessica's in the chicken coop there, running up all of our slides, and we hold you in the deepest esteem and continued prayer for you and the whole family and the boys. And Dolores, Dolores, you're doing such good work reaching out to Dolores, and I will do so as well. Jesus, he fled violence and search of refuge, and so we continue to pray for Ukraine. And on this day, we thank God for placing mothers and mothering figures in our lives who are images of great, fierce love, tenderness, strength, wisdom, courage, weakness, struggle, human, humor, and oh, so much more. We're going to invite one of those motherly figures up forward to read a few poems. Sandy, come on up. Our first poem is Thank God for Mothers by Sandy Peterson. Good morning, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank God for mothers, cause she's the heart and soul of every household. Long hours are hers from morning to night, creating a home so beautiful and bright. When you're lonely and hurting and no one cares, she's the one who will be right there. As a problem solver, she's got a degree. Think of all that she does, I'm sure you'll agree. From early morning till day is done, seldom has time to do things fun. Glamorous sometimes and sometimes not. Her beauty is in her heart, she's got. Always there, any time or place, with patience, wisdom, and tender embrace. We take you for granted most every day, because all you ask for is our love for your pay. If you weren't for mothers, darkness would fall like a forebone gloom and cover us all. We salute you, mother, that we love and adore. We wrote this tribute so you'll be sure. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. And this was in the Royal Star Tribune. Thank you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. And a touch of love. This is from, if some of us older people know, um, remember um, home, home interiors or and this was a, a picture that I found, I loved, and it still is hanging in my office. It's called A Touch of Love. You were six months old and full of love. With a blink of an eye, you were suddenly one. There were so many things we were going to do, but I turned my head and you turned two. At two, you were dependent on me, but independence took over when you turned three. Your third birthday, another year, I tried to ignore. But when I lit the candles, three weren't there, but four. Four was the year that you really strived. Why, you looked at you now, you're already five. Now you're ready for books, for rules. This is the year that you go to school. The big day came. You were so anxious to go. We walked to the bus, going oh so slow. As you climbed aboard and waved goodbye, I felt a lump in my throat and tears stung my eyes. Time goes fast, it's hard to believe that just yesterday you were with me and tomorrow when the bus, bus brings you home and you jump to the ground, you'll be wearing your cap and graduation gown. So I'm holding these moments as hard as I can. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for your great appreciation of such a wonderful medium of art and bringing that and offering it to us on this special morning. Royalty, the royalty of love that we know in Christ as king, king of love, our shepherd is. Royalty that we know in all scripture throughout of motherly 
care, leadership, and an illustration of shepherd, shepherding, guiding us in our lives. We are all learners. Every day we're learning something. It's important in all that we do that we are continuing our education. And it's an important tenant and value in this special place for all of us. And sometimes it's even budgeted. And so I got to go to Atlanta with some of the top leaders in the country who understand leadership. The theme was rethink leadership. And there they said, they looked at me, I told them about Holy Cross and Duluth, and they said, Noah, is somebody praying over your ministry? And guess what I got to respond with? Yes, intentionally, every Thursday. Did you know that? One of your sisters in Christ comes here every Thursday, and we print out everything that's going on in the parish, from our elders who need care, our priorities, 
our mission, and she prays over it. I got to say to the top leaders in the nation, yes, our ministry is being prayed over. Think about that. Share your prayers with us, and we will intentionally pray daily and especially lean into them on Thursdays. Let Jessica and I know, and we will pass your prayers on. Whatever you're experiencing, Jesus faced it too. We faced it as well. So go ahead and chat with somebody during coffee. Connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. You can join a circle. There are a number of things that you can do to lean into your lifelong faith. If you're at home, you can head out to our website and hit the button that says sign up for emails. And the leadership, and Jessica and I, we will send out a note to you on a weekly basis. It's the best way to stay connected with what's going on. Jesus, he struggled too to make ends meet. He worked, he worked hard as a carpenter. He and his friends, in his life, and in his world-altering mission, it was a movement 2,000 years ago, went to Rome and became a religion, a faith. And it's come to us in the United States. And time after time, if you're in ministry, you rely upon. You rely upon the generosity of others like Jesus to get by. If you're struggling to make ends meet, we get it. It's a matter of participation. Now, whatever you can do to get behind and help us lead the ministry mission, and a clear vision in the heights here. We're now going to gather what we can. We have four simple ways of doing that. The website here in worship today. And look at this. You can even text. This is one of those appropriate times where you can take your phone out during worship. <laughs> you can during the sermon too. That's fine. Or you can call if you have any questions to Jessica and I in the church office. We now will gather our generosity, all that we are and have to offer for our mission, God's work, our hands.
It's been a stressful few years for all of us, and I can tell that it's taken a toll in my own life, even so much so that my own mother has noticed, no, you don't talk as much as you used to. You don't seem engaged. But there seems to be so much going in my mind, on in my mind, that I find it hard to lean in and to engage in those present moments. Numbing out God's spirit, moving us from that experience of life, from numbing out to leaning in. Mothers, they know. They know what's good for us. Well, what is numbing out? I have a sense that maybe you've experienced it in your own life as well. Many of our numbing tendencies, we pick them up as kids, and we do so because we're just learning. We're in the moment, and we're just getting by. Some of the greatest research in the country right now is happening in the church, and the development of children and how we can interweave them in lifelong faith. And we are bringing them the research, the books, and the parenting tools to the heights as we understand childhood development. And how we weave the greatest story ever told within it. And then in turn, we raise well-adjusted kids. And a byproduct of that is well-mannered as well. Wink, wink. (laughs) But then as we age, these numbing tendencies, they become unhealthy and unsustainable. They begin to take root. And they surface with issues with alcohol, drugs, Even exercise can be too much. Screen time. 
boy, oh boy. One of the best apps that is available right now and is the top of the technology world is a Bible app for kids. And we will put that into work and into our structure and system as we work to teach the Bible stories to our kids, perhaps even with iPads moving forward. But even that I get a little nervous about because it's just additional screen time. We can have unhealthy relationships and we can numb out with our relationship with food, gossip, social media, shopping, staying crazy busy. I worked myself to exhaustion yesterday out in the yard. These are all ways we avoid feeling. If we engage these things, we can become numb to those difficult feelings that we're avoiding. This is called disassociating or medicating the moment. And this is fine in the short term, but if it becomes a pattern of seeking that continual dopamine or serotonin hit, it can become unhealthy. So thank God for moms and their reminders. Eat healthy. Get eight hours of sleep. Get off the couch and go for a walk. Hey, I'm here for you. You need to talk? Make sure you're talking with someone. Or I see a pattern in your life, and I think it's time to go see a counselor. Eat your vegetables. Did your mom ever tell you that? I love my new air fryer. We eat a lot of chicken nuggets in our family. <laughs> we need to time to time. Abby does a very nice job of that, of bringing the vegetables to the table. Moms are so good. And they follow up all of this with, hey, know your loved. I get all that you're experiencing in life, but hey, I'm always there for you, and I love you. Moms just get it. Simple self-care goals. But moms are there to caution us about numbing out. Cats. Anybody love cats? <laughs> yeah. Sandy, I know you do. Yeah. We have dog people here in our midst. Yeah, so maybe we'll rumble a little bit during coffee hour. Yeah. Cats. It's the most searched theme on the internet today. More than 26 billion views have been made on these cat videos of them feeling, not numbing out, but feeling. And the primary feeling is fear. When they get scared, they're not like us. They react, okay? They react. Let's go back to that picture there of the cat. Yeah, see? And that's okay from time to time for us to also feel. Yeah. When we feel a physical reaction, what do we normally do? We kind of move to numbing out. But have you ever placed or seen the video of a cat and you can place a cucumber behind them? Try it at home. Kids, if you're at home right now, you can give it a whirl. And if they did not notice you place that cucumber behind and that cat eventually turns around, they jump to the heavens and they freak out. It's the funniest video ever. <laughs> they react. And we, we push away. We shove all those emotions deep down inside rather than reacting like a cat. I don't 
I'm not so sure. I think I'm, I grew up with cats, but I'm kind of ambivalent to them today. But we can, le- we can learn some from our feline friends. And also Holy Scripture. There are examples of God's people numbing out that we just simply don't want to follow. Saul, after anointed as the new king, what did he do? He got scared. And he didn't share that fear. He left. He went. And he hid among baggage, Scripture says. Noah, after all that ordeal, he got off the ark and he got drunk and naked. Jonah ran away when God asked his assistance. And he sits under the plant, tries to get away, and what does God do? God kills the plant. Come on, Noah. Come on, Jonah. Come on, Saul. And Jonah's response is, God, you're the worst. I just needed to get away. You even killed my plant, Jonah said. And then Barak. Barak in Scripture abdicated to a strong leader, Deborah. Barak's response to all that he had to deal with in life was, I can't lead like you, Deborah. I can't lead the people into the battle. You're going to have to do it. You go. And then there are characters in the Bible that lean in. Jacob wrestled with God and then limped. Jacob actually leaned in and dealt with what needed to be dealt with and wrestled with God. Wow. Abraham and Sarah, they left their family and their land as God called them from here to there. Disciples, they left everything behind and relied on the generosity of others. They left their jobs, all their belongings, and they followed. Esther could have been killed ended up saving the Jewish people from genocide because she leaned in. David was going to kill Abigail's husband because he was just plain rude. What does Abigail do? She leans in and provided donkeys and food. Her husband died, and she became David's wife eventually. Isaiah. With our discussion guide today, this is where we're going to do our good work this week. Isaiah, who prophesied in Jerusalem, and he was part of the greatest of great prophets from the 8th century BCE. He was with Amos and Hosea and Micah. Micah's a big deal. My parents even named the firstborn in their family, Micah. These are all preachers, and they boldly proclaim God's word of judgment against numbing out, against all the economic, social, and religious disorders of their time. But no one is more important than Isaiah. Isaiah, it's full of terrifying words of judgment and comforting words of promise. Isaiah portrays God as this powerful creator like no other and also the gentlest comforter like an earthly lover or mother. He talks about a time when numbing out will eventually cease. It was an issue back then, but he also prophesied and said, look, it will get better. Yes, There are economic hardships, social issues, and religious disorders. But look, we will get through this, and the numbing out, it will cease. So these are terrifying words of judgment, but also a word from God of comfort. Boy, oh boy, I don't know what's headed our way. With inflation and all the rest.
the increase of rates to try and tamp down on it. But it also reminds us that oftentimes the things that we focus and get excited about can from time to time be idols. And Isaiah says the idols of the nation, however seductive, they will be powerless at some point. God will work then through the victor of the east. What is Isaiah nodding to? Oh, it's big. The powers. God will work through a victor of the east, Cyrus of Persia, and this one will transform the political world and free God's people. Remember, this is 8th century BCE before Christ. You know who Isaiah is talking about. A victor from the east. And the numbing out will be on the run. Isaiah 41, 6 through 10. Watch. Watch for the idol makers. Encourage one another. They do. Those idol makers, they encourage us in unhealthy ways. But then here comes the words of comfort. But as for you, my chosen one, I have chosen you. I have chosen for you a different life, the abundant life. Do not be discouraged. I'm hearing that right now. Discouragement. Especially at the pump. Or at the grocery store. Do not be discouraged. I will strengthen you and help you. So let's lean in. Idols are the things we place our trust in. And trust me, I have a huge issue with it. That's why I need you too. Idols, we place our trust in idols instead of placing our trust in God. The people were putting their trust in all kinds of things that don't have the ability to give life back. What are you putting your trust in this week? Discuss it. Talk about it. What are you putting your trust in that can't turn around and give you life back in a sustainable way? Instead, they will take and take and take until you have nothing left. Just take a look at one of my favorite athletes, Phil Mickelson. He's in the news now. And over four years, he lost $40 million. Gambling is a huge issue. But there's no judgment from this pulpit on him. Because we've all been there. We've all engaged in numbing out. We're all human. We're all in need of the one from the east that Isaiah promised. 800 years before he came, Isaiah prophesied it. We're all in need of the Cyrus of Persia. Isaiah 41. When the poor and needy search, oh, and boy, is that who we are. We are poor. And we're searching. Well, what does God say? I will answer them. I am doing this so all will see this miracle. It is the Lord who has done this. God has done all of this. We gather and we think about all that our parents have provided. But above all of that, God has done this not the idols. Beware of the idols. Present the case for your idols. Let them show what they can do. And here's what it is. They can't do much. They can't save. They can't bring happiness. Ultimately, they will disappoint. So we lean in. We're aware of it. 
and we move forward. The Spirit leads us from here to there by leaning in, saying yes to something difficult, and recognize that God is always working for good in your life. And now we're going to go to Isaiah 58. We'll close here. I love these words. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water. Turn away from the numbing out and the idols. They will just make you thirst for more. But the Lord will guide you continually, giving you water, like the rain coming down today, restoring your strength. That's God's dream for you. Your strength restored. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring. Then the Lord will be your delight. Let the Lord be in your delight, we shared this week with all of you. Why? For all that God has done for you. And if you do that first, watch how God turns around and blesses you. Be like a well-watered garden. Remember this, dear church. When you tend to your gardens this spring, and may it give you great delight. Amen. find a place guide us with
This is what I've always loved about my mom. She always invited us to be curious and still does. To ask tough questions, to figure things out on our own as she would guide us. Jesus welcomed tough questions. Remember that this week. Engage in these discussion guides that are which in your bulletins. Place them on your dining room table, have some coffee, look over them, study Isaiah. Jesus welcomed tough questions, and we do too. So, ask away. We're available. And always be okay with either hearing or saying, you know what, I'm not sure, but let's figure this out together. From number one to five, what forms of numbing out are common today? Do you agree with the comparison to idolatry in the Bible? How is self-care different from numbing out? Have you ever had someone lean into you? And what does that feel like? What does it mean that God is constantly leaning in to you? Where do you see this happening? Now or at another time in your life? If leaning is is the position and posture of a Jesus follower. Disciples, that term, sometimes get lost, gets lost in today's culture. I don't use the term member very often because we're Jesus followers. That's our posture. Well, where could you lean in for others or for yourself? Say yes to something difficult and move forward from here to there knowing that you're not alone and the Spirit is beckoning you forward. What might be difficult about leaning in? And here's the fun part. What might be life-giving? Let us pray. The prayer that our Lord Jesus has taught us now in song. Just as soon as you think it's black and white and you understand Jesus, he is more than what you can comprehend. He is different than you think. Yes, a real person, but always the incarnate. He's a real person with a heart for people. Let us not forget that.
His message was radical in his day, and it still is today. Though he had endless patience with people, he had none with injustice. Furious when the poor were taken advantage of. And may we remember that now and into the summer. He fiercely defended women at every turn and welcomed children. Let us rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Now, dear church, God's children, go with God's unending blessing. children with your blessing never alone waking sleeping I am with you you are my own in my love's baptismal river I have made you mine forever go my children with my blessing Jesus, he was from a small town who then recruited a motley team for his mission. No one saw him coming. The world especially didn't see it. And Scott and I, we relish in this because especially when it comes to me, it's motley for sure. <laughs> and all the others Boy, we just had a lovely meeting this last week with our priority team when we're coming up with our priorities and our plan proposal for our council, and it is beautiful. And guess who led that discussion? The most wonderful leader that I have seen in a long time, Delaney Krieger. Let's give her a round of applause, huh? She's working, she coaches softball, and yet she was in our midst, and she said, if we do this, we will start seeing success. Motley team, of course, when it comes to your pastor, but wonderful leaders in our midst who are stepping up, and we are getting a glimpse of spirit here in the heights. Amen? Amen. No one saw Jesus coming. Ready or not, here we come. Aaron. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>